4.4, derivatives of exponential and logarithmic functions. Let's find the derivative of e to the x. The graph in the table in figure 4.16 provides strong support for this li limit being 1. A formal algebraic proof that begins with our limit definition of e would require some rather subtle limit arguments, so we will not include one here. The fact that the limit is 1 creates a remarkable relationship between the function e to the x and its derivative, as we will now see. And what they're saying here is this limit is equal to 1. The derivative of e to the x, if you use the formal definition of derivative, is e to the x plus h minus e to the x over h. You can split e to the x plus h. e to the x plus h is the same as e to the x uh, times e to the h. Think about how you take x squared times x to the third. That's x to the fifth. So you could write x to the 2 plus 3 as x squared plus x to the third. Then we can factor out an e to the x, and that's what they do on this step. And then we get that limit right here. That's what the, we started with, and they say that is 1. So the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. The derivative of e to the x is equal to e to the x. Pretty simple, straightforward. Using the formula, find the derivative of e to the x, to, uh, e to the x plus x squared. Well, the derivative is e to the x plus x squared times 1 plus 2x. There's the derivative of the inside. So the, the outside is e to the x. The derivative is, it's its own derivative, and then you've got to multiply it times the derivative of the inside. Derivative of a to the x. What about an exponential function with base other than e? We will assume that the base is positive and different from 1, since negative numbers to arbitrary real powers are not always real numbers and y equals 1 to the x is a constant function. It's always 1. If a is greater than 0 and a does not equal 1, we can use the properties of logarithms to write a to the x in terms of e to the x. The formula for doing so is you can write a to the x as e to the x natural log of a. And you can put, bring that e to the x natural log of a, you can bring that x back up to a power e to the natural log of a to the x, that's the power rule for logs, and then e and natural log, they cancel each other out, so you're left with a to the x. If you take the derivative, that's equal to e to the x ln a, that's equal to itself, because the derivative of e is e, and then times the derivative of the inside. So we have e to the x ln a times the natural log of a, and that just cancels out to this cancels out to a to the x times the natural log of a. Now, what is all that saying? If you have the derivative of, let's say, uh, uh, 3 to the x is equal to 3 to the x times the natural log of the base, 3. That's all, all of that is saying. Example 2, reviewing the algebra of logarithms. At what point on the graph of the function y equals 2 to the t minus 3 does the tangent line have slope 21? Well, let's find dy dt. That's equal to, uh, the derivative of 2 to the t is 2 to the t natural log of 2. And does it, where, at what point, at what point uh, does the tangent line have a slope of 21? We have 21 equals 2 to the t natural log of 2. Let's divide both sides by natural log of 2. That's 2 to the t. And then we can take the natural log of both sides, natural log of 21 over natural log of 2 equals uh, natural log of 2 to the t. Then we can bring down that power. We have natural log of 21 over natural log of 2 equals t natural log of 2. And then finally, the t is going to be natural log 21 divided by natural log of 2 divided by natural log of 2. That is equal to 4.921. The point is 4.921 comma, I have to plug that value back into 2 to the t minus 3. So on the calculator, I have 2 raised to the answer that I have in the calculator, and then minus 3. And the answer is 27.297. Derivative of natural log of x. Now that we know the derivative of e to the x, it is relatively easy to find the derivative of its inverse function, natural log of x. 
So let's start out with natural log of x. That's what we want to take the derivative of. Then uh, raise both sides to the e so that you get e to the y equals x. We'll do a little implicit differentiation. And the derivative of e to the y is uh, e to the y dy dx. Derivative of x is 1. And then we divide by e to the y. But e to the y equals x. That's what it says right up here. So the derivative, the derivative of the natural log of x is just 1 over x. And then times the derivative of the inside. So we never forget the chain rule. A tangent line through the origin. A line with slope m passes through the origin and is tangent to the graph of y equals natural log of x. What is the value of m? Well, let's look at the natural log of x. Here's the graph. And they're saying that uh, our line passes through 0, 0 and touches the graph at a certain point. Like that. A line with slope m, and they're saying that the slope of this line is m. Uh, through the origin is tangent to the graph of y equals natural log of x. What is the value of m? Well, this point over here, the origin is 0, 0. And this point right here is, uh, well, pick an x, and then the y will be the natural log of x. Now, we're going to do slope of this line the old way and then the new way and set them equal. So old way is y2. Whoops, I wrote a 2. I don't want that. I want y2 minus y1, which is 0, over x2 uh, minus x1. And that's equal to the derivative y prime is equal to 1 over x. So they're both the slope of the tangent line, so we'll set them equal to each other. We have a natural log of x over x is equal to 1 over x. Well, if they have the exact same denominators, then we don't have to worry about the denominators. We can just look at the numerators. So natural log of x must equal 1. Now, to go from natural log to exponential, we have remember, we have a base e. So e to the 1 equals x. But what does it say? It says a line with slope m passes through the origin as tangent to the graph. What is the value of m? We found out where that happens. Uh, the the x value is this right here. But they want to know what is the value of m. Well, the slope of m using derivative is 1 over x. So m, or the slope, is equal to 1 over e. Derivative of log base a of x. To find the derivative of log base a of x for any arbitrary base, let's say a, an a greater than 0 or an a cannot be 1, we use the change of base formula for logarithms to express log of a, log base ax in terms of natural logs as follows. This is equal to, you could have the log of x divided by log of a, but in this case, they use natural log instead of common log. The rest is easy, it says, uh -huh, of course. Well, the derivative of this right here is that's really 1 over natural log of a times the natural log of x. And then, uh, so we want, here's the constant times the derivative of that function. Well, the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. And we finally get to a very simple conclusion that the derivative is 1 over x natural log of a. Going the long way with the chain rule. Let's take the derivative of this. Uh, the derivative is, it's 1 over x. But this is the x right here, 1 over a sine of x times the natural log of a. So that is the derivative of the outside. And then times the derivative of the inside is a sine of x, natural log of a. That's the derivative of like 4 to the x. The derivative of that is uh, 4 to the x natural log of 4. So we did the same thing here. It's a to the sine x times the natural log of a. And then finally times the derivative of the inside, the farthest inside, is cosine of x. Well, we have natural log of a cancels, a to the sine x cancels. So the final answer is cosine of x. Now that's a fairly difficult problem to do if you're just introduced to the derivative. So let's, let's do something simple. Well, let's do, let's do four problems. How about we do this? Number one, how about e to the x squared plus 5? The derivative of that is equal to 
e to the x squared plus 5 times 2x. And I probably rearranged that to say 2x e to the x squared plus 5. So there's our first derivative, e to the x. Second derivative is something like uh, we could have 2 to the 4t squared plus 5, let's say. The derivative of this one is 2 to the 4t squared plus 5 times a natural log of 2. That's the derivative of really the outside function. And then we'd multiply that times 8t, derivative of inside. The third one that we looked at was a natural log. You could have natural log of x squared plus 5x, let's say. The derivative of that would be 1 over x squared plus 5x times the derivative of the inside, which would be 2x plus 5. And then a fourth one that's probably not, you know, not as complicated as what was in the example would be log base 6 of x squared plus 2, let's say. And we want to find the derivative of that. Well, that's equal to 1 over x squared plus 2 times a natural log of 6 and then times 2x. Using the power rule and all its power, if y equals x to the square root of 2, then the derivative dy dx is equal to the square root of 2 x to the square root of 2 minus 1. Now, if they have it the other way around, if they said y equals square root of 2 raised to the x, then this derivative would be square root of 2 to the x times a natural log of the square root of 2. That would be a power function. But this is just like having x to the fifth. Well, it's 5x to the fourth. You reduce that power by 1. So the answer, letter A, is right here. If y equals 2 plus sine 3x to the pi, then dy dx on this one is equal to pi times 2 plus sine of 3x to the pi minus 1. And then times cosine of 3x and then times 3. Example 6, finding domain. If f of x equals a natural log of x minus 3, find the derivative and then state the domain of f of x. Let's look at the original function, natural log of x minus 3. Now that natural log, the graph, crosses through 1 and then rises you know, forever. This one, the transformation is x minus 3, so now we're 3 to the right, 1, 2, 3. And not only does this point move 3 to the right, but the asymptote moves over 1, 2, 3 as well. So here's your vertical asymptote, and it passes now through 4. So this graph doesn't even exist to the left of 3. So as far as the graph's concerned, we are for, uh, we're at 3 to infinity. Now the derivative of f is 1 over x minus 3. Now, the derivative function, you would think that the domain is, well, you just can't uh, equal 3 because then it'd make the denominator 0. But if the original graph doesn't even exist to the left of 3, then the derivative can't be exist to the left of 3 as well. So the domain here is from 3 to infinity also, not just x can't be 3.